Before we start with our video today, I just want to uh, go through a few warnings. Number one, AC currents are dangerous and it can kill. So be very careful if you want to reproduce this particular project. This project can be a fire hazard. I warned you already. So be very careful again. And this is not UL listed or certified. This is DIY project. Um, and finally, consult a um, certified electrician before you even uh, try to make this project. So basically, be very careful when you try to replicate this particular project. So here what we are doing is we actually have an eight um, socket uh, AC relay. So basically there are eight different sockets, one to number eight, and uh, there is a uh, power input, which is just a three point uh, input. And basically uh, we want this device to be Wi-Fi controlled and each socket to be individually addressable, um, be a compact design, and uh, hopefully make this uh, Home Assistant compatible, have different interfaces, uh, so maybe something like WebSocket and MQTT interface. So first thing you want to do is go and uh, buy a socket, something like this in the US. So these are 110 volt sockets. So they come as a pair of uh, two different uh, sockets. Uh, so in order to make this individually addressable, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to break the tab over here. So there's a copper tab that connects the top part and the bottom part. So once you break it, so each one needs to be connected uh, to its corresponding live wire in order for it to function. So when you see the back of uh, the socket for this particular socket that you can buy from Home Depot, um, so all the uh, screws are on uh, either side and then the green screw is over here. So first thing that you need to uh, do is actually connect the earth or ground to the green screw terminal that is at this portion. And then there are two different screws on each end. So one is a silver screw and the brass screw. The silver screw connects to the neutral line and uh, the uh, brass screw connects to the hot line. And since we broke the tab, so basically each one can be individually controlled. So we're going to put it to a relay. So we will call this normally open relay number one, and this can be relay number two. So basically all this does is it uh, connects this particular uh, socket to the live connection. So make sure that you only connect these lines to the brass screws, okay? So this is how you identify which side you need to connect the live wire versus which side you won't need to connect the neutral wire. Again, I have put all this information in the GitHub page, so you can go and see how this particular hardware is set up. So on the relay side, so I'm just using an eight uh, socket relay. Um, so this costs somewhere around eight dollars uh, on AliExpress or eBay. Um, so what this takes is actually uh, five volt and uh, ground inputs, and then there are eight different inputs. If you give uh, zero volt or five volts, the corresponding relay turns on and off. And uh, the DC part of the circuit is isolated from the AC part of the circuit. Uh, through these so optocoupler, I think that's what it's called. So these uh, uh, make sure that uh, this part and this part remain separate. And then these are these have this uh, flyback diodes uh, and uh, each relay uh, actually connects this part to this part. So this is normally open, this is normally closed. And uh, when you give a five volt input for uh, this particular pin, then this relay uh, connects the normally open to the center that is a common uh, region. So in the common region, in our case, we're going to connect the live wire, the neutral wire and earth uh, go directly to the socket. And each one of these guys connect to the NO pin of the socket. So in this case, we can control eight sockets. And our microcontroller of choice can be ESP266 or ESP32, the code that I have written uh, compiles for both and it can be used for either and what do we would need is a 3.3 volt to 5 volt um, converter so basically it takes this SDA and SCL and converts it to uh, 5 volt signals and then it goes into this particular chip so this chip is a PCF 8574 APE, that is a particular version that I have been using so this particular chip uh, has actually eight 
times eight, so 16 pins. Um, so you connect the five volt to the 16th pin, so VDD, SDA, SCL, and ground. So that's all is required in order to control this. And then you have three address pins, so A0, A1, and A2. In our case, we, con we connect this to ground. So that means that our I square C address is 0x20. And then we can then uh, use this chip to actually turn on and off eight of these pins. So here they're enabled from P0 all the way to P7. So there are eight pins over there. So this can be uh, zero volt or five volts. So basically once you connect this to the relay, you can control each one of the sockets. Uh, again, this library is free, so you can go and download this. And this chip costs somewhere around 10 cents. This 3.3 um, volt to five volt um, converter costs around 20 cents. Each one of these chips uh, costs somewhere around $3, and the 110 volt AC to 5 volt DC converter costs somewhere around $2 on eBay on AliExpress. So next, what we do is uh, we connect these outputs directly into the inputs of this relay. So this means that you can now address each one of these relay uh, sockets uh, based on what input you give to this PCF8574. Why you don't want to use all of your eight different pins the, is because certain pins require to be high or low during boot. So you don't want to um, actually put this chip into a non-bootable uh, state. Uh, this is the only issue with ESP8266, but in ESP32, you have enough pins that it doesn't matter. But uh, uh, in our case, we just use one of this chip to actually expand uh, using just two pins, SDN SCL, to eight different inputs. Again, all the source code for this is in uh, the GitHub page. So putting it all together, we get a box from uh, Amazon. I'm going to put the links below. So the box is somewhere around $9. This uh, receptacle for this particular cable is around 20 cents, and this cable is around a dollar. So this is just a CPU uh, power cable. So this is around a dollar that actually is uh, connected to each one of these sockets using the relay and the relay uh, is controlled using the ESP8266 and everything is, fits inside the box. So putting the, everything together, so it's $27. So in $27, you actually get eight different uh, uh, sockets that can be individually addressed. So the software side, what we have again here, all the software is also on GitHub. So I have created two different layers. So the first one is a WebSocket API, the MQTT API, and both of them uh, give out this particular status. So basically it gives you light one to light eight on or off. And um, the WebSocket API, um, so it actually serves a web page on itself as well. So basically you can access this web page and you can turn on and off uh, each one of these pins. Um, and the same thing can be done for MQTT API on Home Assistant. So all you have to do is put in your um, Home Assistant's MQTT broker that you have been using and automatically uh, sends an auto discovery MQTT message to add these switches into your Home Assistant. So basically the zero configuration, you just upload the code, put your MQTT broker information and all these will uh, show up on your Home Assistant. Again, Home Assistant is free to use and it's an open source uh, effort by a whole bunch of people. And uh, basically here, um, we can go ahead and see what it actually does you can actually control this and they're synchronized that is you change something on home assistant that stuff also shows up here and you change something here uh, the information is also uh, mirrored in home assistant so go ahead and try this project and let me know how it goes and if you have any issues create an issue in this particular github library see you bye